Welcome to our series on Ollie in depth, regionalizing your logs with Google Cloud. I'm Mary, a product manager with cloud logging. One of my favorite parts of working in the logging space is that everybody needs logs. Gaming, retail, FinServe, tech, telecom, government sectors, everyone who runs software has logs. Now the need for these logs can vary a lot, but a common theme is that everyone needs to bring logs from multiple applications, VMs, devices, and possibly locations in the world together to get the whole picture. Cloud logging can help with this, offering a fully managed solution to centrally store, analyze, and get insights from your logs at scale. Today, we're going to focus on how to keep logs in cloud logging in a specific geographic region for compliance. We have lots of regions to choose from as part of Google Cloud. So getting started is just two simple steps. We need to create a regionalized log bucket and point all the log syncs to this new regionalized log bucket. It can take less than 60 seconds to walk through setting up a new project to keep logs in a specific region. Let's take a look. For step one, we're gonna to go to the cloud console. We need to create a new regionalized log bucket. We'll go to logging. And specifically within logging, we'll choose log storage. I'm gonna go ahead and create a log bucket. I need to choose a name call this re regionalized logs. Optionally, I can add a description and I need to choose a region. This cannot be changed later, so it's important that I get it right. Uh, I can choose from many regions around the world. Let's say for right now that I wanna keep logs in the United States to comply with FedRAMP, but I also want to choose US West one because it's a low carbon region. Go ahead and select next. The retention period can be changed later. I'll go ahead and leave it at 30 days for right now, but I could choose any retention period from one day up to 10 years. Great, so now we have a regionalized log bucket, but there's nothing in it. So next, we need to go ahead and redirect a log sync to point logs into our new regionalized bucket. The easiest way to do this is simply to redirect our default log sync to point to our new regionalized bucket. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit the sync. And instead of selecting our default bucket, I'm going to go ahead and select our regionalized log bucket. I'm gonna leave everything else the same, including which logs will go into the sync. And that's it. Go ahead and save that. And go back to our log router so that we can see that everything has been saved and indeed logs will that arrive from now on will go to our regionalized log bucket that's it uh, regionalization in just two steps and all of this can be automated with terraform in addition to being performed through the uh, cloud console as well all right so just to recap we created a regionalized log bucket and sent our log sync to this new regionalized log bucket instead of the global bucket Pretty easy, right? Let's take a behind the scenes tour of cloud logging and I'll tell you about how the engineers who build cloud logging work really hard to make compliance as painless as possible for you. Staying for the tour? Awesome. Let's start with the life cycle of the log entry. There are four stages to the life cycle of a log and our engineers examined each step to make sure it meets your data residency requirements. We have log generation and collection, which is where the logs are generated and sent to the logging API, log processing and routing, log storage and retention, and log analysis and access control. Before we examine each stage, let's look at the system architecture diagram to get the big picture. First, a log is generated by an application. It could be an application that you developed or a third-party application like SAP or Nginx or a cloud service like BigQuery. That log entry will be sent to the Google Cloud Logging API at logging.googleapis.com. It most likely will be sent using one of several open source logging agents that we support, including FluentD, FluentBit, or Stanza, but it might also be sent using client libraries, or if you've got some really special requirements, maybe by calling our API directly. From here, it gets processed by the log router, where it's evaluated against the log syncs, like you saw earlier when we redirected the log sync to point to our regionalized log bucket. Based on the log syncs, you can send it to storage within cloud logging, 
or you can send it to BigQuery, Cloud Storage, or PubSub, where you can discard the log entry if you don't want it. The log router also processes the logs, aggregating them into logs-based metrics or alerts. Assuming that the log entry matches a log sync with a destination in a log storage bucket, it will then be indexed and stored in our storage system, optimized for log analysis. Which brings us to the fourth and final stage of the log lifecycle, which is querying or analyzing logs. This usually happens via the Cloud Console UI, but can also be done via gCloud or API. Logs that are not written to a log bucket will not be available for querying through cloud logging, even if they were sent to a destination like BigQuery or Cloud Storage. Great, so now that we've got the big picture, let's go through how each section works and what it means for data residency for logs. As we said earlier, logs can be generated from applications running anywhere in the world, within Google Cloud or without. We wanted to make sure that sending logs is easy rather than forcing you to choose a region for logs for every single application or deployment. So we offered a global endpoint for writing logs. Now usually a global endpoint on a cloud API would mean that we'd send logs to the best regional endpoint based on factors such as latency, availability, load, etc. But we also wanted to make compliance the easy default. So we did something special with our global API and we region locked it. What that means is that if you send logs to the global endpoint from anywhere within Google Cloud, we'll keep those logs in the region the requests came from. So logs from an app running in US West 1 will stay in US West 1. And uh, logs that are uh, generated in Europe West 1 will stay in Europe West 1 and so on. If you're sending logs from on-prem or another cloud, for example, or you want to override that default of processing the logs in the region in which your app is running, you can explicitly call the regionalized API endpoint when writing the logs instead of the global API endpoint. So you have complete control over where your logs are processed. So to summarize, default compliant, but you have control if you want it. Pretty cool, right? Let's go to the next stage and see what happens after the logs are received by the API. The logs now enter the log router, where they're processed and sent to whatever destinations you choose. This is my second favorite part of the process, because it's where some Google magic happens. If you've run your own logging pipeline at scale, you may have needed to run something like Kafka in front of it to handle buffering and processing. The log router, though, is built on top of Google PubSub, which reliably receives and processes the logs, eliminating the need for you to run your own buffering pipeline. Each log entry is matched against a set of rules called log syncs, which you control. All of the processing is going to stay in the region in which the logs were received. But what if you want to centralize logs from multiple regions together for troubleshooting or maybe analysis in BigQuery? You control the destinations of the logs. So even though the logs were received and processed in Europe West 2, or even maybe in a US location, you can still store them in a log bucket in Europe West 1. This makes it really easy to reason about compliance without worrying about what region processed the logs. Next, we'll move on to storing logs in cloud logging using log buckets. I sometimes get asked if a log bucket is the same as a cloud storage bucket. They're completely different technologies. We use a special logging storage system called T-Cube, which stands for Time Tuple Table. It's an OLAP system optimized for managing logs at scale. Fun fact, we use TCube both for managing your logs as well as for managing logs for debugging applications within Google, like Gmail and Google Search. So TCube processes over two and a half exabytes of logs per month, which is a pretty incredible scale. We've deployed TCube in every region. So when you create a log bucket, we keep your logs in TCube in that region. Pretty simple. There's a small catch though. Can you spot it? I'll give you a hint. It's on this diagram on the left-hand side. You can see two log syncs on this diagram of the log router, the required and the default log sync that go to matching log buckets. And if you look closely, you'll notice a lock next to the required log bucket. If you were paying close attention during the demo at the beginning, you may have noticed that the required bucket is also global, which basically means that Google manages the region for you. Wait, what's up with that? Don't worry, we've got a good answer. The required log sync exists to capture logs that are generated by Google and about your architecture, not your application. 
These logs are critical for security purposes, which is why we require them of all projects. Let's take a look at the logs that are sent to the required bucket. There are three types of audit logs that are included, admin activity, system event, and access transparency. Admin activity answer the question of who took what action on a Google API. For example, a specific service account granted access to a cloud storage bucket. Another example would be that Alice created a new GCE VM or that Bob deleted a firewall role. They wouldn't include read or write to access like Carl reading a GCS file. You can see why these types of actions are really important to capture for security. Next, we have system event logs. These are when an automated service within Google Cloud takes an action, like migrating a VM during maintenance. Kind of boring. Finally, we have access transparency audit logs. These won't capture if anyone in your org reads or writes or changes data, but they will tell you if someone at Google accesses your data. As someone who works in cloud and supports customers, let me assure you that we take data privacy really, really seriously. But there are a few legitimate reasons we might access your data, like if you call support and ask us to troubleshoot an issue for you. In this case, you'd see a log entry with a support ticket, so you'd know who from Google did what. Again, important, but not particularly sensitive. Since none of these are customer-generated logs, we generally advocate that this isn't subject to data residency and that keeping it in a global bucket is okay. But it takes enough time for us to explain it that we're working on some extra org level controls to let you choose what region this required bucket should be located in as well. So check back soon for this in the future. That reminds me that we do have org policies to govern what regions new log buckets can be created in to help manage data residency across your organization. And finally, we're at the end of the log life cycle with log analysis and access control. I told you that the log router was my second favorite part. This is my favorite part because we help solve the problems that your users care about without letting data residency get in the way. Let's take a look at the cloud console. Let's say I'm now a developer rather than a logging administrator. I want to focus my time on my application, not my ops tools. I love that cloud logging makes it easy to search my logs from in context if I'm in the GKE console or troubleshooting something in Cloud Run or from other places within the GCP console. But my CISO says we need to keep logs in the United States. I hope everything just works as usual. I'm going to start by searching for an arbitrary string across all the logs in my project. Let's see what I get. All right, I can see a bunch of matching logs. That's good, but how do I know whether these are being kept in the US? It just worked, which is great. Suppose I want to dig more deeply to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Right now, I'm searching across all logs that are coming into this project, but instead I can choose logs that are going and are being stored into my default or global bucket. Hmm, there shouldn't be any logs there. Let's check. Great, no matching logs. Let me instead select logs that are going into my regionalized log bucket, which I can see is in US West 1. And I see the matching logs and can filter down and use them just as usual. Well, I'm not sure that we succeeded in making data residency fun, but at least it was easy and I can focus on my application. That's it. I hope you enjoyed our detailed tour on how regionalization for cloud logging works. We're continuing to work on expanding controls while striving to make compliance as painless as possible. If you have any questions, requests, or feedback, please visit our community page where Google product experts and folks from the community are answering questions. Search for Google Cloud Community and Cloud Operations. Happy logging!